To write a fraction as a decimal, you have to understand place value. Let's review the places in the place value system. For example, if we have the number 534, we know that each of these digits has its own place. The four, we say, is in the ones place, and it's worth four. The three is in the tens place, so it's worth three tens, which is 30. The five is in the hundreds place, so it's worth 500. We could add a comma and keep going. We could even put another digit here. That would be the thousands place, the ten thousands place, the hundred thousands place, and we could keep going even larger than that, but let's keep it simple. When we're writing decimals, we are talking about amounts that are actually less than one. So the decimals are gonna be written over here. After the ones place is where you'll find the decimal, and the decimal signifies that we're now getting into amounts that are smaller than one whole. So just after the decimal place, if we were to put a digit there, this is the tenths place. So this digit is worth six tenths. And tenths are smaller than ones. They're actually 10 times smaller. One tenth is 10 times smaller than one in the same way that one is 10 times smaller than 10, 10 is 10 times smaller than 100, 100 is 10 times smaller than 1,000, that's why it's called a base 10 system. So when we move into decimals, we're just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. After the tenths place, we have the hundredths place. So if I were to put a digit here, I now have a seven in the hundredths place. So it is worth seven hundredths. Hundredths are 10 times smaller than tenths. I could even go smaller. I could put another digit. This would be the thousandths place, but we're not gonna worry about thousandths right now. So if I want to write a fraction as a decimal, I just have to make sure I put the digit in the right place. Let's look at a few examples. Let's try a simple one. We'll start with eight tenths. If I want to write the fraction 8 tenths as a decimal, I need to put the 8 in the tenths place. I don't have a whole number with this fraction. It's not a mixed number, so I'm not going to have anything in the ones place because I don't have any whole numbers. So I have 0. The decimal says and when you're saying decimal, so I would say 0 and and then I know that the tenths place comes right after the decimal. So if I want to write eight tenths, I have to put the eight in the tenths place, like this. This says eight tenths, or zero and eight tenths in decimal notation. Let's try another one. This time I want to write eight hundredths as a decimal. Well, this time I don't have eight tenths, I have eight hundredths, so I have to make sure that the eight goes in the hundredths place. Once again, I don't have any whole numbers, so I have zero, and I don't have any tenths either. Remember that ten hundredths would be equal to one tenth. I don't have that many hundredths, so I have zero tenths, but I do have eight hundredths. Notice how the eight ended up in the hundredths place. I needed a zero in the tenths place as a placeholder so that the eight would be in the hundredths place. So this decimal says eight hundredths, or zero and eight hundredths. What if I have more hundredths? What if I have 57 hundredths? Once again, I don't have any whole numbers with this fraction, so I have a zero in the ones place. And then I have 57 hundredths. Well, 50 hundredths, that's actually 5 tenths. 50 hundredths is worth 5 tenths, so the 5 is going to end up in the tenths place. And then the 7 hundredths. 57 hundredths looks like this. 
I remember 57 hundredths because it looks like the number 57 and it ends in the hundredths place. Another way to look at it is to think about money. This is how you would write 57 cents. And that's what 57 cents is. It's 57 out of the 100 cents that makes up a dollar. Let's look at an example with a whole number. So if I were to write a mixed number, three and two tenths, now I do have something in the ones place of my decimal. The whole number three, that's where three ones. So I'll have a three in the ones place and two tenths. Notice how the two ended up in the tenths place. So I've got another one. Now I have 11 and 9 hundredths. So I have 11 before the decimal. That's where the whole numbers are, before the decimal. And then 9 hundredths. If I wanted to say nine hundredths, I have to make sure that the nine ends up in the hundredths place, not the tenths place. So I need zero in the tenths place and nine in the hundredths place. Eleven and nine hundredths is kind of like writing eleven dollars and nine cents. Let's look at a really tricky one. This time I have eleven tenths. Hmm, this is actually an improper fraction because the numerator is larger than the denominator, and that means that I do have a whole number hiding in this fraction. If I think about 11 tenths, I can think about the 11 like 10 plus 1. So really this is 10 tenths plus 1 tenth, or 1, because 10 tenths is just 1, and 1 tenth. 11 tenths is just 1 and 1 tenth. Now I can think about writing this as a decimal. I have a 1 in the 1's place, and I have a 1 in the tenths place. 11 tenths, or 1 and 1 tenth, can be written as 1 and 1 tenth. 